Hello students, in this video we're going to solve this linear system of equations. Now the first thing I'd like you to notice is that we have four unknowns, w, x, y, z, and three equations. So we have more unknowns than we have equations. So we have more unknowns than we have information. That means that the system is undetermined. This happens quite often. You'll see this quite a bit in statistical applications, especially in things like regression and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to expect that we could potentially end up with an inconsistent system, so no solution, or infinitely many solutions. I don't expect in this case that we would get a unique solution. I would look for something like that in a square system have the same number of variables as we do unknowns. Now, I'm not going to perform elementary row operations on this system. I'm just going to simply provide the row reduced echelon form. If you need to see how to perform elimination, Gaussian elimination, or perform elementary row operations, I suggest that you take a look at one of my other videos where I go through that process. Instead, I'm going to provide the row reduced echelon form, the RREF. So what you see here on the left is the augmented matrix. And notice that the first column corresponds to W, the variable W. The second column corresponds to the variable X. Third column corresponds to the variable Y. And the fourth column corresponds to the variable Z. I like to put a bar where the equal sign is so I can see what the right-hand side looks like. You don't always see that. Sometimes you just see the matrix written this way with no bar. Now. After performing all the elementary row operations, we end up with the following row reduced echelon form. And I have two pivot columns. That's where I have a one here with zeros below and a one here with zeros below. Now you might ask, well, why isn't this minus two a pivot column? Well, it's because of his neighbor here to the left beats him out to be the pivot. Um, the zero above this indicates that we have a pivot here and again we have zeros clear to the left so this is the echelon form that we're looking for so that makes that makes these leading coefficients here in the echelon the pivots okay that's another way of saying that now that means that i have two free variables that would be the x and z these are the two columns here and that means that i'm going to commit those to be the free variables and I'm just going to go back and I'm going to rewrite this system which is equivalent to this system. I'm just going to rewrite these two equations, these top two, with um, the uh, variables put back in here. So I have a w minus 2x, there's no y, and I have a minus 3z equals 4, and here I have a y minus 4z is equal to 1. All right, now I'm going to solve for w and solve for y. And I see, sure enough, there's x is a free variable, z is a free variable, and here z is a free variable. Remember, free variable, free means these could be x and z could be any value we want. I'll make that clear in just a moment. So now I'll write down, I'll insert a uh, the x and the z as free variables. Now this looks kind of silly here, but sometimes you'll enter a solution into like a, a homework software, like WebWork or something like that, and they'll and these are the solutions you'll put into the boxes. So that's why I wrote it this way. I wrote it this way for another reason too, which I'll explain in a moment. This might be good enough for your solution in some cases where you just say, you might be asked to write the solution in terms of the variables and just leave the the free variables as they are named x and z in this case. Sometimes you'll be asked to parameterize your solution. So you might be asked to like let x equal s or z equals t. If you're not told what parameters to use, you can choose those letters. And what you can do here now, if you notice, I'm just going to rewrite this uh, system here down here, so I have w is equal to 4 plus 2s, because x is now going to be replaced by s, plus 3t, because z is replaced by t. 
And then here I have x is equal to 0 times w, uh, I'm sorry, is equal to 0 plus 1s plus 0t. So there is no, right, there is no constant and there is no z term with the x. And then here for y, we have 1 plus 0s, because there's no x term, plus 4z. So that'll be 4t, because t replaces z. And then same thing with z. I have no constant term. There's no x and there's no y term, so uh, because y is a pivot. So I will write this as z is equal to 0 plus 0s zero plus 1t. So now that I have the constants lined up, right, the 4, 1, 0, there is 4, 0, 1, 0. And now I have the, the 2, the 1, and 0, 0. And then I have the 3, 0, 4, 0, uh, 1, sorry. So you see I have 3, 0, 4, 1 here. And now these are going to be the three vectors that make up our solution. So this would be a parameterized solution. So I'll just put braces or brackets around those columns. And now I have these column vectors. And I'll factor out the s and factor out the t. And so sometimes you'll see a solution written this way. And you say that your solution space is spanned by these three vectors. And now you can see clearly, look, if you let s, which is our free parameter, if you let it be any value, um, and you let t be any value, whatever values you let those variables uh, be, then when you add this together in this linear combination, you'll get a value for w, x, y, and z that will satisfy the system. So for example, if s is 0 and t is 0, then notice that 4, 0, 1, 0 does make a solution to the system. If I plug in 4 for w and 1 for y, look, I get 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. I get minus 4 minus 2 is equal to minus 6. I get minus 4 minus 1 is equal to minus 5. Uh, so I, you can play this game. Just go ahead and try letting s equal 1, let t equal 1, let s equal 2, let t equal 3, let s equal minus 5, let t equal minus 7. Just start picking numbers haphazardly. Add all this together to get yourself a single vector and then see if, check and see if it satisfies the system and you will see that it does. All right. So this makes it clear that you have a free parameter, so you can let these be any value, and you see that your solution, w, x, y, z, can be written as a, what we call a linear combination. It's a combination of these three vectors where s and t are some arbitrary constants. All right, good luck.